All right, guys, let's assess your knowledge on blood transfusion reactions. So a nurse is caring for a 50-year-old female with an upper gastrointestinal bleed. The patient is receiving one unit of packed red blood cells and suddenly develops chills, generalized itching, and chest tightness. Which action should the nurse take? Select all that apply. Now I want you to pause your screen, comment, and then restart it so that we can go over the rationale. All right, let's run through the rationale. So anytime your patient is receiving a blood product, if during that infusion they acutely develop a generalized itching, chills, shortness of breath, chest tightness, then you're going to immediately think to yourself, are they having a blood transfusion reaction? And what steps am I going to take? Let's run through them. So option A, collect blood samples only to check for hemolysis. Now, big red flag here, anytime that they have these never, only, always, you wanna take a step back and ask yourself, is this one of those situations where this is a never or an always thing? So when it says collect blood samples only to check for hemolysis, ask yourself, is there something else that I need to check for? And the answer is yes. You would also need to obtain a urine sample. So option A is not correct. And just to overview that, remember, when you have a blood transfusion reaction to check for hemolysis, you want to grab blood and urine samples. Option B, stop the transfusion and disconnect the blood from the intravenous access site. Absolutely, that is your step one. You're stopping the transfusion and you're disconnecting because you're anticipating a blood transfusion reaction. Option C, maintain that intravenous access with 0.45% sodium chloride. This is false. We do not use hypotonic solutions. We use isotonic solutions. So 0.9% sodium chloride is the only solution that we're using, and we're using it to maintain hemodynamic stability, okay? We don't want this patient crashing. Option D, monitor vital signs including temperature and lung sounds. Yes, especially lung sounds because you want to hear, okay, if I'm hearing bronchi, am I having bronchospasms? Are they fluid overload with crackles? So we want to make sure that we assess all that. Option E, notify the healthcare provider once the patient is stabilized. This is not true. You are notifying the healthcare provider once you're anticipating a blood transfusion reaction. So when you start to see those chills, that generalized itching, that chest tightness, then your first thing you're going to do is stop the transfusion and disconnect. At the same time, you're going to be priming normal saline to flush the line and you're going to be telling someone, hey, call the HCP, we're having a blood transfusion reaction. So you want them there as soon as possible. You don't want to wait till after. All right, follow for more videos. I will be posting on blood transfusion reactions this week and the steps that you need to take. So hope you learned something.